Hi YouTube, I did another trip to Bracklesham Bay looking for fossils. Um, so I've done another video where I did like one day and you can see all the fossils that I found just in that day. Uh, this is my second trip of this year so I'll just show you what I found. Very similar to what I found in the last video but there are some uh, some highlights again. So same like lots of Tarotella. Um, Nummelites, again I could have collected hundreds more, they're all over the place. Um, these are uh, oyster shells and a couple of other shells there. These are actually uh, modern, okay, so they're not fossils, but they're called elephant tusk shells um, and I quite like them, so I, I collect them as I go along. Um, barrier shark's teeth, I actually bumped into a guy down there who um, I met on the Abbey Wood trip and uh, he was telling me that there are like at least sort of 25, 26 different species of sharks um, you know that you can find the teeth from. Um, some are more distinctive than others so some you can kind of identify you know very clearly from kind of photos and things you find on the internet um, but some of them if you think about it the, the different teeth you know have got different positions in the jaw so sometimes you can have teeth that look you know very different from each other but they can actually be from the same species of shark so that's confusing anyway uh, and then apparently uh, males and females of some species have different shaped teeth so again that can be confusing uh, and even like the experts on sharks teeth you know get it wrong sometimes or have <laughs> trouble trying to identify teeth so don't don't panic if you're finding it tricky um, you can see here I've got a few really tiny teeth um, but they're really nice so even though they're micro fossils um, some of these teeth once you get them under a microscope they look really kind of um, crisp and pristine really nice little teeth um, this little thing uh, is like the you know from an eye of a fish and um, so quite often fish and other animals as well like birds and uh, ichthyosaurs famously they have a, this sort of disc of bone in the eye uh, and what it's for obviously is like um, pre like water pressure it basically protects the eye from uh, high water pressure so like fish that swim down into you know deep water um, birds that are diving into the sea that could otherwise damage their eyes uh, obviously they have this protective bit um, and or just birds that are flying at high speeds I guess as well um, and ichthyosaurs obviously because they used to swim deep in the oceans as well so ichthyosaurs quite often have their this bony circle formed of quite a few bones um, but this is a solid little piece from a little fish so even though that's a tiny fossil I was quite pleased at finding it we've got various um, bones here uh, oh this is a coprolite which is just a uh, fossil poo basically so when you look at this under a microscope it's um, it just looks like if you imagine mud I mean obviously it's it's stone but it looks a bit like a lump of mud with little tiny uh, black bones sticking out of it. Um, so yeah, that's how you can tell like a coprolite. So these are all ray teeth um, from Myliobatus species and you can see all of the ridges in them so they're very easy to identify. Um, yeah, lo lots of different ones there. Then I've got these which I think are actually rostrums from something as opposed to because I, I find quite a lot of like um, like stingray barbs but these look similar but I don't I'm not sure they are because they've got like ridges on them and they look like they might be more like parts of rostrums same with this one here very distinctive kind of um, texture to it I'll try and look it up and, and get more information on it so I can identify it properly but really nice finds um, this as well I'm not sure about this but it's looking like it could be um, a palette of some kind I'm not sure I'll, I'll look that one up as well but it's got 
very distinctive um, look to the underneath of it as well, where it kind of has got grooves that go in different directions. So yeah, that that is a nice little find, I think. I thought it was um, like a scoot of something at some point, but I don't know, I'm not sure anymore. Um, right, this is a bit of turtle shell. Um, so is this, I think, but it's been kind of worn away, so you can see all the kind of... Um, internal bone structure to it. It's like little tiny holes. You get used to what bits of bone look like. There's a few more little, um, I think that might be a scoot there. Yeah, a few more similar sorts of things. Um, and what I was going to say was, I collect, if you look at this plate here, this is all just black bits and bobs, okay? So when I'm looking um, and trying to find fossils at Brackleship. What I'm what I'm doing really is I'm looking for objects that are black. Okay, I'm looking for rectangular shapes uh, that are black because they're normally ray teeth, or quite often. Um, and I'm looking for triangle type shapes that are going to be shark's teeth. Those are the kinds of things I have in my head while I'm searching, and that helps me find things. So anything that's black. Um, I'll quite often I'll pick things up and I won't be sure at the time if it's a fossil or not um, and rather than just chuck it down quite often I just put it in my box um, and I think if that is a good idea because what ends up happening is you get a plate like this clean all your um, fossils put them out on a bit of kitchen paper to dry and then you can kind of look through afterwards and use like a hand lens to get a bit more information because often um, they'll just be rubbish like there's quite a lot of bits in here that are bits of fossil wood that are not very interesting um, and they they can just be chucked away but certain other things like this turned out to be a bit of worn shark's tooth I know like it's it's uh, not a great specimen but it is part of a shark's tooth um, there are a few other bits I can see already like this is a bit of bone uh, this is a bit of bone over here. I can see from the texture and actually when I look at all of this these under a hand lens I'll probably find maybe four or five other bits on here that are something quite good and the rest can be chucked away But those four or five bits quite often end up being something quite good or quite interesting. So uh, It is worth keeping things um, Right, I also found oh what I was going to say just before I show you the other thing is um Bits of fossil wood, like I know some of these are really boring, but um, occasionally you find a bit of fossil wood that is something interesting. Like I found a couple of bits that are sort of just like circles, um, but they're actually like little a little type of seed pod, um, and they're wood. And what you do is with the some of the wood is hard, like rock hard uh, and shiny, and sometimes it's a bit softer and slightly um, crumbly um, and with those bits of wood which is what these seed pods quite often are if you've got them in your pot straight from the beach and everything is still damp when you get it home if you um, then rinse it with a bit of um, just normal tap water to get any kind of sand and stuff off it and then put it on a bit of kitchen paper that's absolutely fine uh, and then you just let it dry out as slowly as you can. Um, so don't use a hairdryer on it or anything to dry it, or don't put it under a lamp um, because it can crack if it dries too quickly. And the other thing I noticed, and this has happened to me before, where I had a bit of fossil wood, uh, and as I got it home, you know, it started off damp on the beach, and as I got it home, it sort of dried in the pot. So it felt quite dry when I got it out. And then I went to put it into water to rinse off the sand and stuff. And at that point, it cracked. Okay, so basically if it dries and then you re-wet it suddenly, it can crack. So you've got to be careful about that. It's just um, letting things dry slowly. So the two little seed pods that I found, I just let them dry um, slowly and they've been fine since luckily not nothing's happened to them so yeah you just need to be careful I think right uh, I also found this at Bracklesham not a fossil I know but I 
thought I'd show you anyway. So a fish skull. I'm not sure what species this is from. I'm not very good with fish. You can see there's a couple of little flies on it. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got to be honest with you. This at the moment is a bit smelly because I just literally um, found it. Um, I found that. And then I kind of thought, oh, it's a shame there's no jaw. So I looked around and I found one half of the jaw, but not the other half, which is a bit annoying. So I'll, um, I'll dry all this out. This I probably will either dry, you know, with a hairdryer or um, under a lamp. And then I'll probably get some domestic beetles on it to clean up any bits of flesh that are left. Um, but just drying it with a hairdryer or under a lamp for a while stops it from smelling pretty quickly. And then the domestic beetles just clean up those, those last few bits of flesh. And it'll be quite a nice skull, I reckon. It's quite an interesting shape. You look at the back of it. Look at that. It's pretty cool. Looks really kind of... Um, serpent-like, doesn't it? So anyway, I shall then add that to my um, skull collection. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you uh, want to see more videos on Bracklesham Bay, I've got a few up on YouTube now, um, and other videos of other fossil locations that I've been to. Okay, I took some photos down the microscope to show you, and I've just put them on just as a slideshow. Um, quite often this will be the same fossil flipped over and you can see um, different views of it. Um, a lot of these show the various kind of um, textures of um, fossil bone um, to help you identify if you find some you can have a look down a microscope. It does make identifying things so much easier if you can get it underneath a stereo microscope. Um, so yeah a lot of these things I still you know haven't identified fully yet uh, and I'll do that as time goes on but it's um it's quite nice to have things in your collection that you still don't know what they are to be honest because um it just gives you something to research in the future you know when you've got a spare five or ten minutes <laughs> just have a little google see what you can find um yeah these are the um the bits of i think they're probably a rostrum but i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure i've still got to kind of look these up um, but you can see they're really nice under the microscope, got really kind of crisp um, ridges on those first few. This one's a bit more water-worn. Um, whatever this is, I'd love to find a whole uh, piece, <laughs> like complete, unbroken. It would be really nice. Um, anyway, have a look at these other ones that I've uh, photographed, and if you can identify anything, um, feel free to kind of drop me a message because... Um, like I say, I am still trying to hunt things down and figure out what they are. And if I if I find something and identify it, you know, that's fair enough. It doesn't matter to me if you send me a message as well and give me the same answer. Um, this thing I said was a fish eye. It could be just part of a vertebra, maybe. Um, but, uh, yeah, we shall see. This is that coprolite I was telling you about, you know, with the little... Um, pieces of bone sticking out of it that's quite obviously a coprolite and then those tiny tiny little teeth that I said were like micro fossils this is what they look like under the microscope so yeah it definitely is worth looking under the microscope um, that's just a section of a bigger tooth I think but this one's an, a complete small tooth uh, again like flipped over so you can see various sides of it Here's another piece of um, bone, top and bottom. And I thought I'd show you like the number lights under the microscope. And this next bit, I'm not sure what this is, but uh, it could be a bit of jaw. Um, same with the um, fossil ray teeth. I thought I'd show you what they look like. Um, just the various kind of ridge patterns, you know, they, although they're all, um, you know, ray teeth, sometimes they get very different textures on them, and sometimes they have ridges on one side and they're smooth on the other side. And this is a kind of, like, view of a side of it. And, yeah, often they'll be shiny, sometimes they'll be water-worn or beach-worn like this one, a bit flatter. But 
once you get used to looking for those kind of grooves um, you get your eye in at the beach and you know you can find loads of them if you're lucky at Bracklesham I'm not sure what this thing is it might be a bit of a claw or something same with this one or this could just be a bit of worn shark tooth sometimes you get a bit of worn shark tooth and you think ooh that could be a claw um, this is a bit of wood with little sort of bore holes in it maybe from a um, you know woodworm type thing little beetle or something here's another bit of bone and uh, this is just a pyrite nodule but you know I could say to you um, it's not I could say it's a little tiny fossil hamburger <laughs> Check this out. Look, you can see the little bit of um, tomato poking outside there. Little slice, bit of lettuce stuck in there. And that just proves that McDonald's has been around for a lot longer than we think. Around about 50 million years. Okay, I'll leave you with this video of what it was like when I first got to Bracklesham. Um, the sun was only just coming up. You couldn't really um, look for fossils very easily when the light was this low. but. Uh, probably was only another sort of 10-15 minutes before there was enough good light to be able to search for fossils. Um, but yeah, the tide wasn't fully out. It probably had another um, sort of hour to go before it was fully out. But it was nice and flat. Uh, good sort of conditions for searching for fossils. And I think I did reasonably well on the day. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, make sure you hit subscribe. If you want to see any more fossil hunting videos in the future, check out all my other fossil videos that I've done already. Um, and good luck if you're going out searching for fossils yourself. Uh, recommend Bracklesham. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.